Um, hi everyone, I'm Kasifa. I'm a current student studying mass, um, MRES in experimental neuroscience. So I'm basically filling in for what Steve didn't tell you um, about the MRES. No. Um, so my journey so far kind of pales in comparison to what Sabrina said. Um, I'm Indian uh, by birth, but I moved to the Middle East. And um, so I did my A-levels in Kuwait at the Beer School of Kuwait, adopted an American accent, don't ask me why. Um, went on to Scotland for four years where I did a BSc in Biological Sciences and focused on neuroscience for my last two years. And then uh, turned up here at Imperial and hopefully we'll be graduating at the end of this year in October um, with an MRS. Where to next? I don't know. I'm still in the process of applying and hearing back from people, so we'll see. So a master's. What is a master's really for? Why would you pick to do a master's and what do you gain from it at the end? Um, if any of you are biological sciences students or you have commitment issues, as in you don't really want to commit to a PhD, um, and if you just really want to, just don't have a general idea of where to place yourself within, let's say, gargantuan field of neuroscience, where do you really want to begin? Do you want to go into cognition? Do you want to go into translational neuroscientific research? A master's, especially a master's by research in MRES, is a great opportunity to find out where and what your interests lie in. So, for example, within my course, there's a huge diversity of the range of lab projects that you could be doing. Also, given that we're in Imperial, there is a variety of campuses you could be working in with a huge number of different types of supervisors. The course structure might also appeal to you. As Jane mentioned, they tend to be sort of split between some, um, some theoretical work or mainly practical work. In my case, I've mainly been stuck in a lab doing, uh, well, when I say stuck in a good way, um, but I've been stuck in a lab uh, doing a lot of practical work, but at the same time, I've also been working on mini dissertations, which is also the second part of my, um, of my degree, where I essentially um, read a lot of papers, critically analyze them, and um, write some, something comprehensible at the end of it. Some of the skills you gain from this, I don't know if, I think people have sort of touched upon some of these, but the skills that you gain from this, sorry, are incredibly valuable. Firstly, time management. We bang on about this the whole time. The first thing I realized when I walked into this degree was I had zero timekeeping skills. I thought I was doing great, but I wasn't. Um, and so that's the first thing that you pick up from the get-go is that you're pushed into the deep end. You will be taught some things, but you w there will be a large part of it where you will have to sort of pick things as you go along, and you really have to manage your time. Organizational skills, to have a life and to also be turning up at the lab next day at 9 a.m., to be doing the work and to be getting things done, written, in time, that's really important. The things that you write and things that you present gives you invaluable uh, skills in written communication, presentation skills. For example, doing this right now, I'm shaking, but I think I'm doing okay so far. Um, thank you, yeah, I think I am. Um, independent learning is so crucial to an MRS program because you, as I say, you're pushed into the deep end of the pool and you really have to get to grasp with it as soon as you can. But that does not mean, as Sabrina said, that does not mean you shouldn't ask for help. There is help everywhere. You get assigned personal tutors, you have a supervisor, there are PhDs, there are postdocs to help you. Being a master's student does not mean you should be knowing everything. Being a PhD student, on the, for that matter, does not mean you should know everything. You should ask for help. So, as I said, practical skills that you gain, theoretical skills that you gain, it, get, it gives you a deeper level of what you might now know from undergrad. And finally, think of yourself what you'll be doing in 10 years' time. Don't just prepare for, oh, what am I going to do right after this? Will I be doing a PhD? Will I be doing a job? Think of yourself in 10 years' time. What is, it, what is your end goal? You might not even have an end goal. I'm sorry if I'm scaring you, but I don't. Um, but whatever it is that you really want to do, whether it's industry, whether it's research, whether it's academia, get yourselves, imagine yourselves in a position and then plan ahead and try to take up as many skills as you can along the way. So my time here at Imperial, academically, I finished my first lab rotation um, as Steve mentioned, we do three lab rotations. No, Steve didn't mention that. Jane did. We do three lab rotations. And um, the first lab rotation was from October to end of Jan. And I worked, broadly speaking, on neurophysiology at the Charing Cross campus with Dr. Paul Strutton. Um, and we looked at something called transcranial magnetic stimulation. And we used it to study corticospinal excitability via movements. If that made no sense to you, that's absolutely fine. 
Um, but essentially, we found some very interesting results, and um, which might actually be publishable. So um, that probably bodes good news for me in the next five years' time, when I'll probably have a publication by then. Um, but essentially, what we did was had a lot of fun. There were three of us working with Paul and postdoc, Dr. Chloe, and um, we actually managed to take a selfie in 2014, which is the word of the year in uh, 2013. That sounds absolutely terrible. But um, yeah, we, we had a great time because the supervisor was great and um, the topic that we were learning was very new to us. It, I was completely daunted by the amount of equipment we would have to work with. It's not, not, not something that I was used to, but it um, definitely paid off at the end. What I'm working on right now, um, as I was rescuing my slides just two hours before I walked in here, um, I'm looking at Parkinson's disease in David Dexter's lab, and I'm working here in Burlington Danes with um, Ilse Pienaar. And I'm looking at dopaminergic cells within the substantia nigra and the pedunculo ponti nucleus. Again, don't worry if none of this makes sense. You'll be able to talk like me and, you know, or like Sabrina about Lish mania or whatever that was. Um, in no time, and it'll be fine. Um, what I look at is um, tyrosine hydroxylase staining, which stains for dopaminergic cells in the substantia nigra, or what can possibly look like a fancy moustache. Um, I also look at this, I stain for cells um, on rat brains, and then I look at them on the microscope. They can look like coffee stains sometimes. Uh, things you do to amuse yourself, um, slash look insane. But what do I get up to outside of my degree? Well, I write a blog for Imperial, um, which is the one over there in the corner. Uh, it's rather cheesy. Um, but you can follow uh, what I do. I haven't updated in a month, but I will. Um, um, and I have also found time to take up a part-time job as a telephone caller because I loved Imperial so much. Um, <laughs> Also, I, in my spare time, I go around touristing, baking cakes, and conferencing. Um, so here's a picture of um, the conference that I really did attend. I just didn't have any pictures of me. Um, but this was one of the excellent BNA conferences, the British Neuroscience Association conference that was put up in Christmas about how music affects the brain, which was great. And that's me with Darwin. Um, so finally, how to survive an Imperial Masters, five sagely tips from a suffering master student. I did not say suffering. Um, firstly, identify the lab that you're going to work with. Identify the supervisors you want to work for. As Sabrina said, to re-emphasize, not just, you know, oh, I really like the area of cognition, I'll go work with so and so, but really stalk them. Everything is out there on the internet. Stalk them essentially, read up about them, read their bios, talk to P uh, the PhD students who work with them, talk to postdocs. If you can, visit their labs, get an idea of it contact them, email them, and so on. Secondly, don't be afraid of the unknown. It's really important that as a scientist you embrace the unknown because that's really what we do. Uh, that's what research is all about. So step out of your comfort zone. Thirdly, time management. I think I've gone on uh, enough about that. And lastly, when you do manage your time, remember to take a break, um, which I think I kind of forgot to do. Um, but get involved in societies, get involved in clubs, go out with your friends, sleep, eat food, we forget to do these things, it's important. And uh, finally, learn as much as you can, and if you do take up the masters, which I do hope you do, any masters, whatever it is, have a great time. Thank you.